Advocate of Nigeria challenges President Muhammadu Buhari over petroleum minister portfolio. He, sued, he files a suit against the federal government of Nigeria to determine the constitutional qualification of the president to hold that office. And the petroleum sector still in focus. Allegations of 17 billion US dollar stolen crude oil and liquefied natural gas to foreign destinations still pending. We continue to ask the question until we get the answers. And thanks for joining in, everyone. This is Politics Today live on Channel Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye in Lagos. We kick off with an update on a developing story that we have always showed you, perhaps one that uh, caught the eye of the public on this program, the Chief Judge of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Justice Ishak Bello, has turned down a request by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Bubaka Malami, asking the court to issue a warrant summoning the Senator representing Borchi Central Senatorial District, Senator Isha Misao. The office of the AGF had, on October the 10th, 2017, filed two separate charges against Senator Misao for making false allegations against the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, Senator Misao is being accused of making a false statement claiming that about 10 billion naira is being received by the Inspector General of Police on a monthly basis from oil companies, banks, hotels and individuals as bribes for police protection. Allegations describing it as... And today, Kogi State Governor met President Muhammadu Buhari as usual. After the meeting, comes the press asking the questions. And when asked about what he discussed with the president, he said, the workers that are on strike are political civil servants. To him, politicians are at work. Politically, Kogi State is stable. You know, um, really, really very, very stable. Just a um, few diaspora policies in the media, and then I think um, you can't stop them from making noise. We always allow them to make noise when they want to, and then, but the reality on ground is that Kogi State is very, very stable politically. But if you listen carefully to that soundbite, did the name of his major political rival, the popular senator, pop up in that discussion? We're just thinking aloud. Moving on now. The federal government has said uh, that there is no missing $25 billion anywhere. Neither is there a contract of that amount noted. But are there pending corruption issues in the NNPC? There are factors pointing to that. Before we dig up a particular case that is almost, um, uh, for, uh, almost forgotten, let's bring you an update on the latest in the petroleum resources industry. A senior lawyer today does not think President Buhari is qualified to hold the executive office as Minister of Petroleum. He is taking a step by filing a suit against the federal government of Nigeria to determine the constitutional qualification of the president of Nigeria to also hold that office. And these are his arguments. Well, he said on the basis of section 138 of the Nigerian constitution disqualifying the president of Nigeria for taking any paid employment or holding executive office or minister of petroleum resources, the president cannot hold office as a minister of petroleum resources. His other argument is that in any event, the president's appointment as Minister of Petroleum Resources was not confirmed by the Senate of the National Assembly as stipulated by Section 147, Subsection 2 of the Constitution. Sustain in the oil sector. There have been allegations of stolen crude oil and liquefied gas to foreign destinations. It's been going on for a while now, and uh, disturbed by these illicit trade activities, a legal firm in the United States are taking up the case, but to an unconclusive state, they have met a brick wall, especially with bureaucracy standing in the way. Take a listen to this U.S. lawyer. It's been very difficult for us to get information out of the branches of the Nigerian government 
uh, on payments so that we could try to match the payments up to the deliveries and the shipments that came into the United States. Uh, that and the, the court system in Nigeria and the inability of a someone who sues in Nigeria to force the, the defendant to give them information. It's very difficult to force a defendant in Nigeria to provide you with the information that you need to prove your case. I would say that you know, if we want to move forward and we want to get results, we need to start in the United States because we can get the information from the buyers of the oil that we need to trace it back to the sellers of the oil and we can follow the money from the sellers to the big banks in New York who then wired the money to Nigeria. We can find out who they were dealing with and where the money went. Now let's go to, into the discussion of all of these issues. Uh, the uh, member of the House of Representatives who first moved this motion about these billions and billions of dollars of stolen crude oil of Nigeria to global destinations. Honorable Johnson Agbonyima, a member of the House of Representatives representing a State, a member of the PDP, and also a Lagos-based lawyer, Mr. Ikechiku Ikeji, both of them join me here in the studio. Uh, Mr. Ikeji is here in Lagos, and Mr. Agbonyima is in our Abuja studio. Let me first and foremost uh, uh, start with a conversation around the suit against the federal government on whether or not the president can also take office as the, um, the minister of petroleum resources. There have been a lot of uh, argument whether or not the president should drop that role as a petroleum minister. Let me begin with you, Honorable Member of the House, uh, uh, Abu What do you make of the president holding the two offices, the position of the minister and as the president of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria? Well, thank you, Mr. Shew, and thank you to our viewers out there. Uh, first of